Since 1976, Farms for City Children has given over 100,000 children from our inner cities a taste of country life. They now have farms across the UK. But the story began at Nethercott in North Devon when it was bought by the writer Michael Mulpergo and his wife Claire. City children are the same as any other children. The only difference is the horizons around them. Um, they live in a place where the sky is cut off very often by buildings, where um, the roads are full of traffic, where concrete and tarmac prevails. Out of the children that have come, I think maybe seven or eight have ever been to the countryside. Once they got out, they just literally, they were kids again. They were playing, they were laughing, they were giggling. They just wanted to tear out of the coach and take a look all around the grounds. And, Do we get to play here? And they just couldn't believe the amount of space they would have been for the week. I haven't been anywhere like this before. I think it's nice because back in the city, we, you don't really see grass as fresh as this. I think it's a great opportunity to like, have all this space because like, when we go home, it's going to be all squashed and stuff. They've been interacting, they've been playing together, they've been involved in activities that involve teamwork. We live in the PlayStation generation. Everything's fast, entertainment's just a, cl a click of the fingers away. And a lot of the children, I think, were quite worried and couldn't believe that they were going to spend a week with no TV. I thought, you've got to be kidding me, no telly? Because I like watching telly quite a lot. And then once I got used to Nevercott, I started thinking telly's not important anymore. Over 100,000 children have been down here, but actually it should be millions. This should be something that happens for every child in this country. It should be absolutely part of their education. It is as important as your maths and your literacy and all these other things. I think it's important for them to learn about farming because I've learnt in my years of teaching that children are completely unaware about food and where it comes from. When we talk about the food that's on their plate, a lot of them don't associate chicken with what's running around in the field outside. Can you not feel her? She's vibrating. And I think they have more of an appreciation for it. Yay! that you know, we write on the blackboard, um, these potatoes are from the garden, and they talk about, oh, we had the potatoes from the garden today. Fresh bread, garden cheese, grated cheese, grated cheese, grated cheese, grated cheese, grated cheese, grated cheese, cheese jam tarts. And they're eating the sausages. They're aware that they've come from a group of pigs that they've been working you know, with throughout the week. You know, they'll talk about, oh, yeah, we ate the pig. Is that the pig that was here last year when we came? You know, and they're fine about it. It's a great opportunity for them to bond and for teamwork and to, to get stuck in. And certainly for kids that, you know, maybe struggle back at school, it's a great leveller because uh, for all the kids it's a, it's a whole new experience. Can you imagine if you come from Bermondsey uh, in the middle of London or the centre of Manchester and you looked out on the scene of Dartmoor for a week and you've walked these fields and you've seen buzzards mewing in the air and you've seen herons lift off the rivers and you've moved sheep and you've land sheep and you've seen the milk come out of the cows and you've done all this stuff. What a difference that makes to your life. Many, many teachers have said to us, you can learn more in a week here than you can in a whole year at school. But it's because it's so different. And I suppose that's why for city children, it's so important. I do the chicken skirt, chicken skirt, chicken skirt, chicken skirt.